uh, which we run uh, every two weeks. Um, so we really thank you all for attending. And today's topic is about uh, leadership and uh, especially leadership strategies for the rebound. As most economies across the world are looking at how they can reopen their markets um, post the pandemic, COVID pandemic, uh, one of the key challenges is how do you strategize for that rebound of the economy or of going back uh, to work or going back to an open market um, from a close down. Um, so with us today is uh, Dr. Martin Ojuar, who is a CBS Chief of Earnings Peer, one of our most coveted uh, uh, awards, uh, presidential awards. Uh, I'll let uh, Ken Kenfield uh, introduce uh, Martin a little bit more. And uh, Kenfield is the CEO of Ojuar. So Kenfield, please go right ahead. Thanks, Gilbert. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Kenfield Griffith, CEO and co-founder of Ajua. As many, many on the webinar know that Ajua is an integrated customer experience platform that connects businesses to their customers in real time. Spe um, specifically, even more important at this time, whereas distance is a big um, issue for businesses staying in touch with their customers and their employees. I'm really um, excited to have Dr. Martin Ajua on our webinar today. And <clears throat> leadership, um, and I think this is a very important point, you know, you never really see leadership until crisis happens, right? And that's when leadership really emerges. And now today we're going to have a really great conversation with Dr. Martin Nadua just to talk us through about leadership, especially through a crisis and looking at how do you actually um, sustain and thrive after that crisis, specifically um, the pandem pandemic and a lot of um, issues that are going on around the world um, currently. And you're seeing different types of leadership happening. And Dr. Martin um, Adua, he is, is um, the founding member and also the executive coach of the leadership um, group. And I'm, I'm a proud member of um, Dr. Mar Martin's coaching. Um, it's really um, great to have him here. And also he serves on boards such as Diageo, Barclays, and Kenya Airways. And also with the former CEO of KCB, which I think he's going to talk a little bit about as well during his webinar, because at that time, it was a lot of things going on in Kenya that also emerged him as a leader and um, to, to be an uh, expert in this um, domain. So without any further delay, I welcome everyone to um, listen in and really, really in, indulge into the topic of leadership, especially at this point. It's very important. None of us have been through a pandemic. And it's very important for us to really listen and see exactly what are the traits of leadership and really thrive throughout this um, pandemic. Thanks, Dr. Martin Adua, and I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ken and, uh, and Gilbert. And uh, um, I'm very delighted that uh, Adua has invited me here today to share some thoughts with you um, and also get to learn from you as to how you as leaders are managing during this period of time uh, that is clearly uh, new to all of us. Uh, let me just share my screen at this point so that we can then get on with, uh, with the discussion. So the topic of our discussion today is uh, from surviving to uh, thrive, thriving, uh, leadership strategies for, for, for the rebound. As, um, as Ken has said, I uh, am an executive coach and uh, I work for uh, the leadership group, which is a company that I founded a couple of years ago. Um, I, just, just a slight correction to um, uh, what, what Ken said. I actually I don't sit on the board of Barclays, but I sit on the board of Standard Bank uh, of South Africa. I sit on the board of uh, EABL, it's a breweries, uh, BAT, as well as uh, Kenya Airways. And, um, and other private sector uh, institutions, including the not-for-profit uh, SOS Children's Villages uh, International as well. Um, what I want to do is to uh, go through probably a half hour, 35 minutes of uh, presentation discussion. Uh, and then at the end of that, I'll open it up so that we can then field some comments and questions because um, both of us are, are all of us are here to learn, so I'm learning from you just as much as you're picking up one or two things from what the presentation will, will say. Uh, as I've mentioned, the, um, uh, I work for the leadership group and, uh, uh, and, and the services that we offer the leadership group are executive coaching, which Ken has referred to, 
business advisor, which includes strategy, uh, change management, uh, mentorship. I also work with boards of directors in the area of governance and board practice, uh, as well as leadership development. This morning, um, uh, what I'd like to, to cover is um, a couple of things. One, just to, for us to appreciate how the COVID-19 crisis has changed business as we know it. I also want to uh, look at um, uh, how leaders are navigating the impacts of the crisis uh, to explore what it would take to, to bounce back and also to identify some of the fundamental changes that business needs to make to thrive in the post-COVID era. There's a quote that I like here, which I picked up a long time ago from uh, originally from Charles Darwin, uh, the, uh, the father of evolution, but I've, I've seen it more recently from uh, Leon Meginson, uh, and I'll read it. It is not the most intellectual of the species that survives. It is not the strongest that survives, but the species that survives is the one that is able best to adapt and adjust to the changing environment in which it finds itself. This saying could not be more apt uh, uh, than uh, today when we find ourselves in the middle of, uh, of, of COVID-19. And uh, you know, just looking at, at the context, uh, the word unprecedented has been used more than any other word during this period to describe uh, the pandemic that, uh, that we are in. And everybody has had to learn first uh, how to cope uh, and even just to be aware of, uh, of, of, of where they are and what's happening around them. We know that uh, consumer purchasing power is down, uh, certainly with the, the lockdown and the curfews and uh, some of what is happening around us, which we'll come to talk about uh, later. Uh, the initial shock and, uh, and inertia and the uncertainty that hit us in this region uh, three months ago or so, when COVID was first, uh, first became a reality for us and, and everybody thinking about how to respond. Um, you know, moving to a point where uh, we all uh, realize that, you know, this is actually real. Uh, we must survive, we must restore uh, businesses, we must look after, after ourselves. What I saw organizations do was uh, quickly reactivating their crisis management or business continuity programs and teams or setting this up where these were perhaps not there before. Um, but the, the question that remained and that still remains is uh, what will the rebound look like and how do we rebound? And especially if we look at strategy, uh, you know, many of the strategic plans uh, are probably one to three years out uh, now as we, as, as, as we think. So businesses which thought they were going to have a great year in 2020 uh, are perhaps having a rethink uh, of that unless they are in industries which are directly related to uh, COVID-19. I picked up this, uh, uh, this map from uh, the, the John Hopkins uh, um, uh, website this morning. Uh, we see that uh, you know, the number of cases globally is up is over 7 million, number of deaths over 400,000, which is, um, is, is, is scary actually. Um, I don't have the latest numbers for Kenya, but uh, the last time I looked, uh, the number of cases was approaching uh, 3,000 and the number of deaths were around about uh, 80 or so, and those numbers may have changed. And so it's, it's, it's unprecedented uh, when we look at uh, those numbers as well and what's happening. Uh, and the fact that this is a global pandemic is uh, something that uh, makes it even more, more scary. We know about the initial uh, responses. I mean, you know, so, so initially, as it was first announced, uh, the whole thing about social distancing, uh, you know, the hugs and greetings that we are very much used to as social beings uh, uh, thrown out of the window. Uh, working from home is something that we have had to get used to, uh, to now. Uh, a lot of public institutions were closed, including restaurants and, and, and bars and other social places. Uh, children working, for, uh, learning from home, uh, you know, sports clubs and other uh, public spaces closed. Uh, and perhaps, you know, the scary bit about uh, uncertainty about the future and the fear of the unknown, what exactly are we, are we going into? And even as we speak now, nobody knows when this is going to end. 
And so uh, this has actually not changed. Some of these have moved on, but some clearly uh, are still with us. And the increased health fears and concerns, uh, and, and ultimately the financial strain that um, uh, many individuals and businesses uh, are feeling. Some of what we have seen, uh, you know, are so businesses closing customers home or, or on various types of lockdowns and curfews, uh, economies shrinking. When you look at the GDP growth rates that are being announced, uh, if you look at, at Kenya, for example, the uh, government had announced uh, growth rates for this year upwards of 6%. Uh, now that number is much closer to 1%, uh, and it's even worse in, in, in some places. Um, so shrinking economies uh, in businesses, down trading, people trying to preserve, conserve the shilling or the, 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 the money that, that, that they have uh, and therefore going for different options in their purchases. But we've also seen on the, on the positive side the growth of e-commerce, uh, home delivery for, for some of the organizations that which have been able to move fast in that space. Digital products, digital channels uh, and the banks have become probably slightly more friendlier with their clients uh, through restructuring of, of, of bank facilities. We've also seen the uh, explosion of, uh, of virtual, virtual meetings, um, remote access. Uh, you know, we've seen challenges and opportunities of working from home. We all know the hygiene guidelines, you know, washing hands and, uh, you know, sneezing into, uh, you know, elbows and, and, and all sorts of things. Um, companies have had to be more uh, responsive to, to staff. Uh, we've seen companies which have been able to put out safe transport for essential staff so that uh, at least they're able to uh, keep the social distance as they go to work for those in essential service uh, industries. Um, those organizations which didn't have policies, uh, guidelines for remote working have had to put this in place. And I was, uh, you know, running a, a webinar the other day for an organization which said, you know, we don't even have uh, policies for remote working, so how do we start? And they've had to come back and do that very, very quickly. On the painful side, we've seen redundancies and pay cuts, uh, and we can, we can talk about this later. And of course, the challenge for leadership is how do you deal with all these, uh, all these things? Uh, as I've mentioned, enhanced digital communications uh, and engagements. Uh, safety has come to the fore. Um, as, 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 uh, and one of the other issues emerging is, of course, the whole area of mental wellness or mental well-being. If you are it's sort of working from home for two or three months, something you're not used to, uh, if you're confined to just seeing the few people around you that you live with, uh, this takes its toll, uh, even on the strongest of us. So having to deal with those and, and for leaders, having to deal with this in the workplace is, uh, is one of the, the challenges as well. And of course, even as people prepare to go back to work, uh, as, as uh, economies begin to open up again, uh, how do you continue to maintain those social distance arrangements in the workplaces and what investments are organizations putting in place uh, for that? I picked up from uh, a McKinsey article uh, recently, uh, uh, this quote, which I want to read to you. For many, the toughest leadership test is now looming. How to bring a business back in an environment where a vaccine has yet to be found and economies are still reeling. It's the toughest test for leaders, how to bring a business back in the kind of an environment where we are. So I'd like to look uh, very, very briefly at leadership uh, and also then I look at, at, uh, at, at strategy. Um, there are many definitions of leadership, but one that I picked up and that, was, that uh, I find quite pertinent to where we are now is this one, which says um, leadership is about um, envisioning a better place and inspiring others to make the necessary sacrifices to go there. So in our in the space where we are today with, with COVID, you know, what does a better place look like? It's certainly a place that uh, is much more... Um, uh, you know, positive than where we, we have been and where we are today. Uh, and our role as leaders is, uh, you know, inspiring others uh, to make sacrifices. I mean, people are making sacrifices today in terms of pay cuts in some industries. I, I mentioned that I sit on the board of Kenya Airways and all our planes are on the ground. 
Um, you know, what we saw in the early days is uh, the leadership going out to the staff and really engaging them. And uh, this is public information because it was widely covered in the media. Uh, staff agreeing to take some very painful uh, pay cuts because there was no more revenues coming through uh, the, the, the streams. And so, uh, you know, this, as, as, Kevin, as Ken said earlier, times like this really call for leadership to show up. About two years ago, I was running a, a leadership program for uh, at the Aga Khan Media School of uh, uh, Graduate School of uh, Communications, uh, and it was uh, run in collaboration with uh, uh, Harvard uh, Kennedy School and uh, uh, you know and, and, and some of the professors there. And we we're talking about adaptive leadership. And I was think as I was thinking about this webinar, I thought that I, I should bring in this whole concept of adaptive leadership. Um, which is the work of uh, Herbert professors uh, Heifetz and, and Linsky. And the definition that we got there at, uh, at, at that workshop was that adaptive leadership is the act of mobilizing a group of individuals to handle tough challenges and emerge triumphant in the end. So a leadership about mobilizing individuals to handle tough challenges. And there could not be tougher challenges than what we are facing today. And at the end of it, we all want to emerge triumphant. Two particular things that attracted me in, uh, that attract me in, in, when I talk about adaptive leadership is that uh, it defines challenges in, in, in two spaces. Uh, most of us treat challenges as technical challenges, uh, but many, in fact, most of the challenges we face are a mix of both technical and adaptive. Um, adaptive because, um, you know, it's about behavior. It's about uh, influencing behavior that will, they will then enable us to achieve the desired objectives uh, while taking account of uh, the realities uh, on the ground. And so as, as, as leaders mobilizing and developing people to face tough challenges and, 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 to, and to succeed. If you look at technical challenges, uh, we find that these can be critical and very, very complex, but they can easily be solved by bringing in expertise systems and processes. So if I look at, uh, you know, if I look at uh, COVID and I look at um, something like working from home, the technical challenge there is, do our staff have the necessary equipment? Do they have the, uh, you know, the, the laptops or, or the different devices that they need to carry out their work from home? Do they have the necessary bandwidth and connectivity? So that is simple. You can give all your people the, uh, the, the devices that they need and the connectivity, uh, and that's it, solving the technical problem. But what is the adaptive challenge there? You know, adaptive challenges require new learning, uh, require discovery, self-knowledge, uh, changing assumptions, beliefs, habits, and allegiances. So the, the adaptive challenge in that example would be, so you've given me all these things, but how do I actually work from home where I've got family around me, I've got children who are also learning from home because uh, uh, schools are closed. Uh, and how do I, do I then as a leader manage to perform on these gadgets that you've given me when I also have got uh, a, a different environment from which to perform. And so the challenge is not just providing the equipment, but the challenge is also a change of behavior uh, that leaders uh, need to then have a lot of communication about uh, it's, it's a culture change, it's, 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 it calls for change management. And within adaptive leadership, there's also the concept of looking down from the balcony. So leaders stepping back uh, so that they can see exactly what is happening and then coming back so that they're not, they are not uh, kind of crowded or, or, or taken over by the confusion, the panic that may be happening among their teams in that particular instance. So to what extent are we actually able to step back from from what is happening, uh, look down keenly uh, and, and observe, uh, you know, what is happening around us, reflect, uh, then be able to intervene. A lot of us are experimenting with, with things. We are making mistakes and we are learning through those mistakes as we move forward, you know, continuously learning and sharing uh, and then moving forward. As, as, as I mentioned, the topic of, uh, of, of this conversation was around leadership strategies. And, you know, thinking about strategy, um, a simple definition of strategy, which, which says the, the logic that drives action. So what is the logic that we are using at the moment to drive the action that we are taking in this period of, uh, uh, of, 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 of COVID? So, so, you know, one, one simple way of looking at strategy would be 
to say that, uh, you know, uh, it starts with a diagnosis. So what is happening in our world? What do we need to become? So, so when you talk about, you know, sort of vision, mission, et cetera, so it's a response to what we are diagnosing and seeing around us. And then we say, you know, so where do we want to play and how shall we win? So as we look at COVID, what are leaders seeing as their playground uh, and how will they win? How are they going to come out on the other side uh, and, and uh, kind of beat competition and be ahead and survive and thrive? And then what is the story that we are, we are giving out with our various stakeholders? How are we exciting our people? So our people are working from home. Um, how do we even know that they're working actually? And how do we excite them uh, that, that their environment is actually a positive environment from which they can actually perform and therefore help us deliver uh, our strategy? And then, um, you know, what is the agenda? What are the, the actions that we need to do to, to take so that we can then uh, deliver uh, what, we, what we need to deliver? So, so just kind of as thinking about leadership and, 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 and strategies, you know, uh, it's important for us just to reflect uh, on that. So if I move forward and just look at how um, leaders have responded uh, and, and look at kind of three waves here. So in the first instance, it was about, so COVID has happened, therefore, what do we do? So, so, so the, the phase of mobilization. So, so I picked up this slide from the PwC um, uh, literature. There's a lot of literature around COVID actually uh, in this period, uh, lots and lots of webinars. So there's a lot of material that, that we can piece together to get to understand uh, and to learn from other people. So in this one, there's, 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 there's a first wave which is sort of mobilizing. So, so, so immediately uh, COVID happened, uh, organizations were looking to securing the safety of their workforce and establishing a structure and whether that structure was already defined within the, the business continuity plans uh, or crisis management plans was one thing. If it wasn't, then that was a phase where organizations were doing that. Uh, the second uh, space was uh, therefore uh, this, the phase of stab stabilization. So developing responses uh, to the challenges of navigating uh, the new normal that, uh, that, 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 uh, that COVID uh, then led us into. Uh, and then the final uh, wave is really around strategizing to emerge stronger in the post-COVID economy. And we'll, we'll reflect on this a little bit shortly. So looking at those three waves and the question that I would pose to yourself is just again to reflect, how have you and the organization moved through these different waves? Uh, I want to give an example here, which uh, I picked up from uh, some literature around uh, from the automotive industry with Volvo. Uh, in China, um, and and if you look at uh, at at, uh, at what's on the screen, you'll uh, what it says is that life was moving as normal in the business as usual phase, uh, and then the uh, sales began to plummet. Uh, the, the 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 COVID spread was not really under control. Uh, there's a lot of panic. Uh, in the third phase, then sales were down, but people then woke up with the reality and sort of said, so what shall we do and what can we do to continue uh, to survive? And so taking control, uh, sales are down, but improving, and then emerging into a state of what um, uh, is called the new, new normal here. So sales settling, they're settling at probably a lower level than before, but they're settling nevertheless. And therefore, you can then use this to begin to move to the next stage and begin to think about uh, the uh, uh, <clears throat> the rebound, uh, if you if 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 you look at it that way. So, looking at how leaders are navigating, and again, just sharing some um, uh, information from emerging literature, uh, and I'll just call out a couple of things here. So assuming and demonstrating responsibility. So ultimately as leaders, we are accountable, we are responsible for the fate of our organizations and what we do. And therefore in this complex and uncertain world, leaders are called upon to really assume uh, and demonstrate uh, responsibility, uh, making tough decisions um, and embracing collaboration in a space of uncertainty where nobody really knows uh, you know, and everybody's learning as they go ahead. 
but also appreciating the urgency and, and, and acting decisively because uh, you know at such times leaders are called upon to uh, to act so um, one that i find really important here is um, being grounded in values of our organizations accepting the challenge uh, and, and and being grounded in values at this time values are what enable organize uh, what distinguish successful from non-successful organizations uh, are you an organization that is really driven and bent on profits at whatever cost? Or are you an organization that actually has got a value around um, empathy with staff and empathy with your, your clients and your customers? Uh, because you will need them on the other side. And therefore, I find that values-driven uh, organizations, um, I, I think, will emerge much more successfully uh, on the other side. Obviously, talking about shared goals, uh, looking for the necessary expertise. Collaboration is one which is quite important. Collaboration within organizations, but also with parties outside organizations. So to what extent, for example, is, has your organization been able to collaborate with, you know, um, you know people like uh, Safaricom and other telcos uh, and other, you know, institutions of learning, um, research and, and innovation? What about with the communities? We've seen a lot of organizations going out to support communities at this time, especially those who are more disadvantaged than, uh, than themselves. Um, and so, you know, a, a lot of ways in which leaders have been navigating or trying to navigate. Uh, we've, we've gone through other crises and therefore, you know, learning from crises. If, um, if I just reflect and, and Ken mentioned this uh, way back in 2007, 2008, when when in Kenya we had the post-election violence uh, and I was CEO of, of KCB at the time. And I was just reflecting on another webinar, the kind of actions we had to take, you know, to kind of ensure that staff were safe, moving people from zones where they perceived to be non-compliant to zones where uh, they could feel more comfortable de dealing with safety and security issues. Uh, and also um, stakeholder engagement just to try and see how the private sector could help could work together with government and the politicians to bring back uh, some semblance of uh, peace and law and order uh, in that. So what is it that we've learned that organizations have learned from crises such as, uh, such as those? Henry Kissinger was uh, Secretary of State of, uh, of the US for uh, at a time when uh, there's a lot of action in the Middle East um, in particular, so I remember him for, for, for that. One of the quotes that I've taken from, from him is this one, which says, the historic challenge for leaders is to manage the crisis while building the future. So the question for us is, uh, we've got to manage today, but we cannot forget about tomorrow because we've got to prepare for that rebound that is tomorrow. So I found this, this quote very, 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 very apt. I want to share a short video uh, clip here uh, just to underscore what we've said so far and what uh, we want to, to talk about before I, I invite comments. So I hope this will come out clearly from your side. If it doesn't, uh, let Gilbert know and he'll uh, instruct me accordingly. Hi there, I'm Tom Holland, a partner in Bain, San Francisco and a leader of our transformation just worldwide. As you can see, I'm actually sitting in an office today, and most of this month, I'm working on a special project for one of Bain's healthcare clients, trying to help them ramp up one of the medical solutions to COVID-19. So it's a very exciting project, and it does have me in their offices with a SWAT team working on this day to day. I wanted to share some thoughts about how companies are responding to this crisis, and I'm particularly focused on companies that are not the ones that were very distressed early on, but that may see challenges ahead in the coming months and quarters based on the macroeconomic scenario. So while there are a few companies that were super distressed, airlines, hotels, et cetera, and actually some growing companies right now, it's all the companies in the middle where I think the management teams are really wrestling with how to deal with this crisis financially. And we're encouraging them to do three things over the coming weeks. One is, rigorous scenario planning, where we all have seen the macro story of the disease and what might be happening in the economy in terms of unemployment. And we're really encouraging companies to take those possible macro scenarios, which we believe will be 
ongoing for quarters. It'll take many quarters probably to recover from just where we are today economically and run those through your business and think about what that's going to do to your demand, your revenue line, and not to try to pick a point estimate. It's impossible to do that in the environment we're in, but rather to think about scenarios that are wide ranging and include fairly distressed down situations that would be depressed demand for many quarters, but run those through your P&L, your cash model, and really think about point two, what actions do we need to take? Not just today, but what might we need to be ready for, you know, for the next nine months? And a cascaded, if you will, set of possible actions to manage your cost line, manage your P&L, and for businesses that get distressed, manage your cash and liquidity. And then third is, uh, and it's a little bit of a happier thought, but begin to think about the recovery and which might be months in the future. But as you begin to see demand recover in your business, you know, what are the things that have changed during this crisis, this downturn that really could be leading you to new ways of working in the future? And so I'm thinking about things like knowing that most of your employees are able to work remote unless they're operationally hands-on, you know, do we need all the real estate we have? Thinking about automation, thinking about simplifying your business along some dimension of consumer offer or customer offer, operational complexity, organizational complexity. So there is an opportunity here to hit reset and again, to take the downturn and the recovery and think about what you want your business to look like a year from today. So those are my thoughts, and uh, I hope each of you is uh, doing the best you can and doing well in this time period. Thanks. Right, so um, <clears throat> that brings up uh, uh, you know, three critical things there that um, uh, I hope that uh, as you reflect can, can help you move forward as well. Um, <clears throat> rigorous scenario, scenario planning, um, what, out, what actions do we need to take, and then thinking about the opportunities for, for the future. And so some of the questions that uh, therefore as leaders we need to, uh, to pose and reflect on or are around <clears throat> you know, how will life change for our customers? <clears throat> <clears throat> what will happen to our current competition? Uh, who might be the new competition? Uh, where will we get new talent? So if um, you know, we lay off people now, um, you know, where shall we get new talent when, we, when, when, when there's an upside and, and we need this? Uh, what about the supply chain? What will that look like? Uh, what specific things will set you apart in the new market? Um, one which is my favorite is what specific things will you need to stop doing or to let go of? Um, and what are your new monthly focus and key milestones? So questions that as leaders we need to think about in the post-pandemic uh, uh, period. And uh, I was listening to one of the airlines, in the uh, trade union is in one of the airlines in, in, in Europe uh, recently, and he was asking that, that specific question that if you let go of all these pilots now, uh, and in, in, in 18 months time or two years time or three years time, you need them, what's going to happen? And he was posing that to the management and leadership of the airlines. Uh, there, some of you may have heard that as well. And so, you know, this, uh, as I thought about that, it brought me to this, uh, to the whole question of change. Uh, you know, one of the, uh, the leading gurus around change is John Cotter, who many of you may have read his book, Leading Change. And John Cotter pulls out these eight items that he says, you know, these are things which stand in the way of change. And I, I, I thought it was quite important as we talk about, as we think about how should we, re we rebound to also reflect on some of those things that we should not do or things which can stop us from actually achieving what we want to achieve on the other side. And one is, uh, you know, not establishing a great sense of urgency. So there's an urgent need for us to, even as we deal with today, to think about uh, tomorrow and what we're doing. Uh, not creating a powerful enough guiding coalition, coalition. So to what extent are all our stakeholders aligned with us, uh, our teams, our staff, et cetera, uh, to move forward? Uh, lacking a vision. So uh, are we still invested in, 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 our, in the vision we had in the post pre-COVID world or, or, or how are we managing that? Communication, uh, really, really important. Um, you know, uh, not removing obstacles to a new vision. So, you know, what are those obstacles in our way and how are we dealing uh, with them? And then planning, um, 
and creating short-term wins. So what are we doing now which gives our stakeholders and our, our staff confidence that actually there's a future beyond today? Uh, also, are we too excited now and are we sort of seeing victory too soon? So when uh, the president, Uhuru Kenyatta, said the other, over the weekend that uh, now you can work a full day, you know, are we at a state where we have declared victory and is that not too soon? And then, of course, the culture issue. If we don't anchor all the changes in the corporate culture, then again, we are bound to go at a much slower pace and perhaps not get out on the other side. So getting our priorities right as, as leaders is important. Uh, we've talked about acting now to protect and run the business today, but also planning now to retool the business for the future. How do we accelerate through the recovery and how do we retool for the new world? So even as we've got a team of people that are working to sort out today's issues and make sure that we survive, do we have a team in place that is thinking about how we retool for the new world and how we shall accelerate through the, through the recovery? I looked through an article that uh, PwC uh, put up um, recently, and uh, uh, they, they, they kind of called out five key uh, strategic priorities that, uh, that will help us emerge through the crisis. One is, and in, in that uh, video clip, it has been highlighted, uh, realigning your cost structure and sharpening productivity. So learning to do more with less. Second is supercharging the digital transformation agenda to create a digital enterprise. And this is where Ajua can help you uh, because that is the new normal. That is a space that we are all uh, going into. So the speed with which we, we go into that space is going to be important. Thinking about new revenue streams, um, you know, there were organizations which were never in the, in the business of, uh, of doing, um, uh, you know, producing sanitizers. And now they are big a new revenue stream has emerged in terms of producing hand sanitizers. Uh, preparing the workforce for the new world, uh, working from home world, uh, or a combination of working from home and working from the office, uh, and then stre strengthening cash, liquidity, and capital efficiency. So these are five st uh, priorities which have been called out and which uh, I'd like you to uh, think through as well. Clearly, coronavirus is already rewriting a new future. Um, Harvard Business School um, literature in May uh, pulled out this. Uh, and I just want to call out two or three of them. Uh, remote work will become um, uh, strategic. Uh, leadership will engage people to work together creatively. Uh, employees and buildings will be healthier. Uh, In-person meetings will be less important. So the sooner we get used to that, uh, the better. And of course, employees thinking about their own uh, new work priorities. I mentioned that I sit on a number of boards and some of you do as well. Uh, but if you look at the relationship between boards and management or boards and leadership, some questions to ask at this point would be whether uh, for boards to ask is whether the executive uh, leadership is adequate for the moment, uh, whether management has got the right mandate, uh, and, and, and the board has enabled or empowered management. Um, is the board supportive enough? Uh, are we providing stakeholders with the information they need? Uh, what about operating? Are we operating in the most effective and efficient way? Are we preparing adequately for the post-pandemic future? And are we taking care of ourselves? So again, uh, coming out of INSEAD, uh, just to say that uh, as boards of directors, we also need to be very close to our teams at this point and asking the right questions uh, as, as we move forward. So like in conclusion, therefore, um, uh, and then we can have uh, uh, an open discussion, uh, comments from you. Uh, just a couple of, uh, uh, of points to, uh, to reflect on and to take forward. Um, these are picked up from BCG. One is to act proactively, um, you know, to, 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 to learn to fix it before it breaks so we can see what is happening now. So how do we fix our organizations to be much more um, efficient, effective, uh, much more innovative, um, you know, digitally um, savvy organizations at all levels, uh, increasing vitality. And again, I've spoken about innovation, um, harvesting new ideas, reinventing our corporate strategy. Our strategies are probably out one to three years as I said earlier, so how do we reinvent that? Uh, sticking to a clear vision, 
and 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 uh, you know looking at uh, some of the themes within that building resilience so that organizations can withstand future shocks learning from the current crisis and finally streamlining the organization uh, redesigning processes um, you know the digital agenda as I've, as I've mentioned and trying to generate uh, efficiencies as we heard from that video clip framing potential scenarios and using them to develop a robust plan of action and uh, i do know that uh, certainly in the organizations in whose boards i sit uh, we've gone through countless uh, potential scenarios uh, that then would help us reach at uh, different uh, plans of action and then finally just in closing you know um, we may not be able to predict the future but as leaders we can seek to understand what the future might hold uh, and do something about it because that's what we are called uh, upon to do as uh, as leaders so i'd like to stop there uh, gilbert and, uh, and and come back to you so that you can lead us through the the next session so thank you very much for uh, for listening to me thank you very much uh, martin really really informative and uh, i took note of several of the quotes that were there and, and, and some of the guidelines especially the eight pointer on, uh, on the things to do for, for the recovery part. And they're quite powerful. Uh, remind us also of the things that we need to focus on. Um, you know, the part about the value, the companies that, that, that focus on, on core values, especially the employees, and all that is important as well for recovery. Uh, that's, 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 especially at this time, that's, that's very much needed. Uh, where companies are going through, you know, very stressful um, restructuring programs. So just before uh, I go to the rest of the questions, uh, which are, are, are quite great, so just a quick reminder to everybody else, please just put your questions in the q and I'll just come to that shortly. Um, and then just, just looking, you know, back to 20, 2019, right? You know, second half of 2019, a lot of debates about whether there was going to be, a, you know, are we in a recession, global recession or not? So a global discussion happening. And then uh, moving into 2020, a lot of optimism that, you know, this is going to be the year. And then uh, within about two months, a different reality started to set in. And, and now, which is kind of set in terms of what's going on. You, you say you sit on several boards. So I want to kind of like, you now draw out a more personal learning from you. Uh, and you sit on boards of, I will call it institutional companies that, that must survive the pandemic and continue, right? Um, you must still be able to draw out that strength of vision, right? Because, you know, otherwise it, it can be negative. You have to draw the strength of vision from moving forward and then get your management team or management teams to execute on that vision. What are some of the learnings you've learned across board uh, from the various boards you're in, um, especially trying to make that happen in the last couple of weeks or months? Um, thanks, Gilbert. I mean, I, I have seen across uh, each of those uh, organizations, uh, you know, the kind of ag agility that I've not seen before. I mean, I, I you know, actually COVID, uh, you know, started rearing its head. Um, you know, all these organizations invariably, uh, the leadership and the boards uh, came together to begin to reflect on what exactly this means for us today. What does it mean? Uh, for us in terms of uh, continuing to achieve our vision. So uh, restating what that vision is very, very clearly and looking at COVID perhaps in a sense as, uh, you know, one of those uh, kind of interruptions uh, in, in, in the process, recognizing the fact that um, strategies were, were thrown out uh, uh, and yet we still, our vision is consistent. And so what is it that we need to do uh, to ride the wave and therefore be able to come out better on, on, on the other side. So across all the organizations, I've seen a, a recommitment to, uh, to vision. I've seen a recommitment to the values. Uh, I've seen uh, uh, very much uh, a, a more investment in new business models, but very much in line with, uh, with the vision. So when I mentioned things like... Uh, um, uh, e-commerce, um, you know, when I, it, digitization, those are things which have now had to be accelerated across each of those organizations to see us through, but very much still ex uh, consistent with our vision. Great. Um, I want to combine, uh, I want to combine a question here from, well, it's anonymous though for now. Um, with one thing you mentioned about uh, leaders having to cope with substantial stress right now. 
right? So, you know, we do forget sometimes that leaders actually do have to copy, especially right now with a lot of stress and, and, and uh, that they have to deal with. It. Um, and and if, you, if, you, if you couple that with the challenge of job insecurity being at an all time high, um, how best can you advise leaders to manage uh, through this process? Um, especially with the health parts as well, where stress is concerned. Um, and then, of course, within the organization, how can they execute um, the level of insecurity that there is right now from a job perspective? I would say, Gilbert, that, that this is the time uh, where, um, you know, leaders are really called upon to be more human, as it were. Uh, I think the side in us uh, has got to come out perhaps even much more, um, you know, empathy. Uh, there's a balance here between the economics and, uh, and, and, and the health and, person, uh, and the safety kind of issues. So um, I've seen a lot in terms of uh, obviously a lot of communication uh, uh, increasing, a lot of town hall meetings where leaders are talking about not even the strategy of the organization, but are just talking about well-being and the need for employees and for you know people to look after themselves uh, giving support to uh, to staff uh, you know uh, psychological support um, health and safety type of uh, type of support uh, and just engaging people even in this space where people are working from, from from home with regard to job losses and redundancy again I've seen a lot of uh, leaders coming out uh, really their vulnerability as, as individuals, as people, and, and uh, having honest conversations with, uh, with their teams, um, putting on the, on, on, on the table exactly what the, the difficulties and the challenges are, and uh, you know, looking for a collaboration with the, with, the, with, the, with the employees so that even if uh, you know, it's a of, of, of pay cuts, um, you know, there's a conversation that is taking place there. If the discussion, if the discussion around layoffs and redundancies, uh, then some of the most successful organizations and leaders have actually, uh, you know, done this, but done this in a humane way by sort of saying yes, because of this we've got to let you go, but uh, we will still continue to look after you. Uh, we'll give you support in terms of career and how you can move to the other side. Uh, we will give you a package that can see you through the next, you know, um, six to twelve months, even as you as you settle down. So it's it's called for much more uh, humane uh, leadership than perhaps what people are used to, which is very much, uh, you know, uh, delivery of results today, tomorrow, and, and and the other day. So so Gilbert, that is something that I'm that I'm seeing and that I would recommend certainly because, uh, as I said. On the other side of this, you you will need some of these people, and some of these are fairly fairly good uh, talent. I was looking at, I was watching telly CNN last night, and uh, there was a, 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 a line running, sort of saying, you know, Emirates to lay off X number of pilots, and I can just imagine in that situation the conversation that must take place with those pilots, and sort of say, in 18 months, we probably need you to come back. Therefore, we need to leave. You need we, you go, but we are still friends, uh, on, uh, even as we do this. Mm. No, great answer, uh, Martin. I like the way you put it. Uh, uh, now, uh, there's a question from Rose uh, that's asking, uh, leaders should not waste a crisis. What are your thoughts on some of the strategies that companies can employ so as not to waste uh, this particular pandemic crisis at this point? Um, you mentioned some of them, but just give a quick highlight on that. I would say, Gilbert, that uh, this, uh, this crisis calls for um, leaders to really, really look at the efficiencies and productivity within the organization. That is certainly one area. Uh, you know, the, the, the processes and how efficient those processes are. Um, you know, some of the things that, uh, yeah, because a lot of organizations are old and they've inherited things traditionally, this is a time to almost go back to the basics, go back to ground zero, and sort of say, if we're starting a new company afresh, you know, how would that company look like? Uh, therefore, you know, in, if, if I were to use the analogy of the, or, or, or the framework of balance scorecard at this point with the four quadrants of financials, people, internal processes, and customer, uh, you know, leaders need to go into each of those boxes and just begin to look at 
how efficient, effective, and value adding some of the processes and the, the models within those uh, boxes are. Uh, so that uh, on the other side of the curve, they are actually, uh, the organizations must look better than what they have looked at pre-COVID. And of course, of course, looking at uh, polishing up some of the response uh, units like you know, crisis management and BCPs, as I mentioned in one of the organizations I was working with recently, uh, you know, there are no policies for, for working from home, for remote working, for example. So where, are, where have you seen gaps? What learnings can you take from here to be better on the other side? No, got it. Got it. Um, there's, I want, I'll combine two questions between John and, and, uh, and Jockey, which basically is about uh, uh, if you look at the five P's, and you mentioned a bit of it in the balance cooker, the four quadrants, uh, four boxes. So, um, kind of find, trying to find the middle ground or where to focus more, uh, whether it's you know people, purpose, you know, uh, an organizational culture and soft skills or technical skills. Where, where, I know most of your presentation, you've actually mentioned the really importance of making sure that the people part, you know, that sometimes, you know, in the good times are, are not being looked at really well. Uh, this is the time to really refocus back on the people part, just because of the, the kind of broad nature and macro nature these challenges. It's, it's, it is deep, and it's deep at a personal level. Um, so where do you see the lie is, you know, between the technical, uh, you know, leadership vis-a-vis -vis the soft skills people part and, and among also the other five P's. Right. I guess when I, when, I, when, I, when I talk about adaptive leadership, and that was precisely why I brought that into this conversation, mm -hmm. that technical, um, technical issues are easy to deal with because you can throw technical solutions at them. But at the end of the day, you need humans to manage uh, and to run these organizations and to, you know, to uh, uh, interact with your customers and with your different uh, types of stakeholders. And so uh, I, would, I would say, and, and certainly from what I'm seeing, organizations, uh, successful organizations, are much, much more closer to their people, uh, are working to be more um, authentic with regard to how they manage their people, um, are having more and more conversations uh, with, with, with their people, are seeking out new ideas um, with them, but again, as I said, where there's a real challenge, where people have got to, uh, to be let off, uh, more successful organizations uh, are, having, are doing that in a very human way. I would say that the balance is here, here is that you still need the technical side so, because that must work uh, as a tool. But leadership is now about inspiring. It's about giving hope. It's about staying positive. It's about, you know, attending to people's mental uh, state uh, and stress levels and just seeing that you can get your, your staff, your teams to come out on the other side, feeling that you really cared for them during times of trouble. And that's the kind of leadership that uh, I very much uh, uh, you know, subscribe to uh, and, and that I would recommend. Great. Um... So on uh, another question regarding uh, data, the importance of data, another you as a data company. And thank you earlier on, uh, uh, Martin, for the free advertising in terms of what Azure helps customers uh, do from a customer experience and, and, and data on customer feedback. Um, Brett, how do you see, uh, just a little bit more on, uh, you know, bold decision making around uh, uh, using data, especially at this time, and the importance of data at this time, right, uh, in right. critical decision making. Right. So, um, I, I mean, we all know that, that uh, you know, literally and, and successful organizations uh, are very much data driven. They rely on, 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 on fact and on data and, and less on subjectivity. And uh, as, as people are making decisions and uh, revisiting their strategies now, uh, a lot of it is being uh, driven by data, uh, driven by different modeling. Uh, I mean, even if we just look at, uh, at um, um, at COVID itself and decision making around COVID. Um, even if we looked at, uh, we listened to what President Kenyatta said the other day. Over, he said, you know, I could reopen, not reopen. You know, if we if we did twenty percent, uh, these would be the numbers that come out. If we did forty percent, these are the numbers that would come out, etc. And my advisors have said, you know, uh, this this is what it looks like. 
So the importance of data cannot be overemphasized, uh, uh, Gilbert. I think organizations, as you look to rebounding on the other side, need to be uh, data driven. Uh, there's always a space for management judgment, uh, clearly, uh, but that must be judgment that is also supported by, uh, by data. Great. Um, what advice will you give, this is from Edward, uh, what advice will you give our, our business that is in the startup stage <laughs> at this time? I all guess that's double compounding challenges right there, but uh, what advice will you give? I think this is advice I think a lot of uh, Kenyans or SMEs will, will, will make to it. I would say that, uh, I mean, it's probably the same advice that I would give to mature organizations as well. I think it's, it's a matter of scale, really. Um, the points that we've, been, we've discussed uh, around just really looking at their strategy, really looking at what their customers are going to look like tomorrow, uh, the kind of competition they're likely to face, conserving resources, looking at their cash and liquidity and their capital much more closer. Um, looking at partnerships and collaboration, uh, who is it that they can work closer with to see them through this, uh, this kind of period. Um, you know, really looking at, um, at, at, their, at their business model again. I mean, this may be big words, uh, but, 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 but they can be made simplified. And, and just, just really uh, going back and, and, and learning from this experience of the crisis and sort of saying, you know, what do I want to be on the other side of this crisis? And therefore, if I look at uh, the different components of my business, which one should I be working on to, to become more efficient, more agile, uh, more effective? Uh, you know, how close do I need to continue to be with my customers or what, how, how close can I get to my customers? What about my teams, my, my, my staff, however few or many they are? I mean, in, in my own organization at the leadership group, uh, we, we have uh, a core staff of just about uh, five. And then we've got a whole array of consultants that we use from time to time. We are all working from home, home at the moment. Uh, we, uh, um, you know, we have our weekly calls with all our staff members on Zoom. Uh, you know, we, we check on what's happening and who is doing what, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we check on one another. We uh, ask how we are doing at a personal level and we try and give as much support as we have. And I would consider ourselves a startup. You know, we are we're a five-man uh, organization, well, uh, two men and, and, and four women organization. And, and, and so, you know, the same principles apply to us and, uh, and looking at our customers and our clients in the same way. I hope that sort of gives some insights. <laughs> in, indeed, indeed. So thank you for that. Uh, we only have time for just one or two more questions before I ask you for your final. So I'll, 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 uh, I'll see if I can wrap some of them around your final uh, remarks. Uh, but uh, regarding the remote working that you just spoke about, uh, in, for the companies that you sit at the board, uh, do you feel that they're adequately prepared as a general indicator for the country in terms of remote working? Um, well, uh, even if uh, companies were not prepared at the beginning, they have had to ramp up very, very quickly and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and be able to, uh, you know, to, to, to provide the necessary infrastructure for, 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 for work to continue in whatever, whatever format. Some of the organizations I, 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 on whose boards I, fit, I, I sit are... Um, kind of essential services and therefore they've had to continue through this period and therefore enabling staff has been uh, has, has been important and uh, all of them were not at the same level at the beginning but very very quickly within the first uh, one or two weeks uh, you know they were all, all up and up and about because more than 80 percent of the staff were working from home and uh, and they had to be enabled so so people have been forced i think COVID has forced people to do things in in different ways some of them much more creative, and uh, some of which is going to stay with us uh, beyond now. Indeed. Thank you very, very much, Martin. I think that marks the end uh, uh, of, of the questions part. If we do not manage to, to, to answer all your questions, please uh, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, like we said already, that uh, we will be able to share the webinar within 24 hours post this event. Uh, on the Azure YouTube channel. But for now, I'd like to invite Martin to just give us his final remarks uh, to close off the session. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll end it there. Thank you, Martin, over to you, please. 
So Gilbert Walskin, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to uh, this uh, Ajua we uh, webinar and uh, to share some of these views and also just uh, listen to some of the comments and questions that are coming through because this is, these are real kind of live issues that um, all organizations and all leaders are dealing with. Uh, I just want to encourage uh, you know, people on the call to really continue to encourage their teams to lead them in a way that is authentic, to lead them in a way that uh, provides hope and and continues to uh to inspire uh, you know um to inspire kind of confidence it's difficult times we're in a crisis uh but the times of crisis is when uh, real leaders uh, emerge that's the time when real leaders come out this will come to end as some people have said in one form or another uh either through the discovery of a vaccine or you know through some other means uh, but, uh, and, and we want to ensure that organizations continue to thrive even during those times. So uh, thank you all very much. Um, stay safe, keep positive, and let's lead our organizations uh, for a rebound. Thanks, Gilbert. Thank you very, very much, Martin. Uh, really, really appreciate inspiring words and a great closing on positivity uh, because that's what leaders are about. We need to be able to look beyond the curve, uh, see the positive uh, and, you know, and work with our teams towards uh, that end. Uh, this marks the end of a Jewish Stay Alive and Thrive uh, uh, webinar series for today, uh, which is about leadership and, and thriving, um, especially post-recovery of the pandemic and the rebound for the economy. Um, looking forward to you know, meeting all of you again. Uh, and thank you so much again to all the attendees. This could not have been what it is without you all. And the questions that are quite inspiring as well. Uh, some of the comments that you've put there, especially the concerns around the people and lack of empathy that, that could, could be seen among leaders. And this is a time that we need to pass on that message to leaders that people, empathy is in even more at this particular time. Thank you all. Stay alive and thrive. And God bless. Bye-bye.